This is The Speaking Show. I'm David Newman, and you're tuned in to the number one podcast for speakers, consultants, and experts who want to speak more profitably. All right, here we go. Bulldog selling. There you go. Rottweiler. You know what the difference is between a Jewish mother and a Rottweiler? Eventually, no. the Rottweiler lets go. <laughs> On that note, we are here with the incredible, the amazing Suzanne Evans of Driven Inc. And man, oh man, is driven a fantastic word. Give us a little bit, Suzanne, of the background and the backstory of your professional journey that brought you to what you're doing today. And then we have so much to talk about, but give us the three minute overview of your awesomeness. Well, I like to say recently it's Driven Inc. INC, like incorporated, not INK. We don't do tattoos, but we could give you a referral if you'd like one. Yeah. So about 11 years ago, I was working in the Broadway theater industry as an assistant producer for Broadway theater. That's a fancy word for secretary. And, you know, I had an interesting life. I'd opened five Broadway shows and put Reba McIntyre into Annie Get Your Gun and Usher into Chicago and Melanie Griffith into Chicago. I mean, I had an interesting life, but I also had $100,000 in debt, making $50,000 a year, living in New York City, which means I was making $17,000 a year anywhere else. And, you know, no freedom, right? Working all the time. And I also got that itch that so many people get, like, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? Is this all there is? Like, will I ever, you know, be free to make my own choices? And so I, I started on this journey of who I wanted to be when I grew up. And that'll be for another podcast sharing that full journey and maybe a podcast where everybody wants to drink wine. But um, <laughs> I landed on coaching, never heard of coaching, didn't know anything about coaching. And I decided to become a coach and I decided to start it as a side hustle while I worked a 60 hour a week day job. And so I worked a 60 hour a week day job. I started my side hustle of life coaching in the beginning. I was a life coach and I grew a six figure side hustle while still in a 60 hour a week day job. And I stayed in the job and I then grew it to a $250,000 side hustle while I was working 60 hours a week, making like now I got a raise. $60,000 a year in a day job. And I did eventually leave the day job, which I called uh, very affectionately my business loan. And so I left the day job and see, I was a really lousy life coach. It was really bad. I was making 250000 a year and I was horrible. I was horrible. People would call me up. They'd say, you know, I'm struggling with my husband. I'd say, well, leave him. <laughs> They were like, well, I don't, I don't want to leave my husband. I go, oh, so you're a complainer. I actually was quite effective, but life coaching was not my calling. And T.D. Jake says something where he says, most people are on their transportation, not their destination. And life coaching was my transportation. And when I left the job and I pivoted to Driven Inc., which was a business coaching, marketing, consulting business that I have now, we went to seven figures in about 10 months. And so here we are today with you of a New York Times bestselling book, The Way You Do Anything is the Way You Do Everything. We've been on the Inc. 500, 5,000 for five straight years and made their honor roll. I have a three and a half year old toddler that I have almost civilized. And that's the journey. And here we are. It's a crazy winding road, but I wouldn't have changed a single turn. Let's talk about the $250,000 side hustle, because I'm sure our listeners are dying of curiosity, as am I. How did you charge for that? I mean, that must have been very expensive life coaching, correct? Um, no, at the time that I probably transitioned out of the job, I think I had a package that was $1,500 a month, uh, but I only had a couple of people in that. And I think my, my main packages were $450 and $700 a month. I worked, I took clients from 6 a.m. in the morning until 8 a.m. And then I got on the train and went into the city. I worked the job. I did marketing calls, booked myself for speaking on nights and weekends on my lunch break. On the train home, I'd do follow-up calls. I came home for an hour and would eat and kind of catch my breath. And then I would do coaching sessions from about 8.30 till about 10.30 at night. And then I became very savvy 
I'm on the East Coast and I became very savvy. And I, when my docket began to become very full, I only went after West Coast clients so that I could take coaching clients up to 11 o'clock at night. And it was still on West Coast time. So yeah, that's the deal. Wow. Well, and now I think I know why your company is called Driven. Yes. Driven. Yeah. Now, before we turned on the microphones, you and I were having a conversation about people who love to sell and love to work. I know you have an awesome, amazing coaching team. You've got all kinds of incredible programs. Everyone on your team is 110% in. They're in with both feet, two arms, and probably a basketball or something. Yes. Most entrepreneurs, speakers, consultants, coaches, they would look at a team like yours and say, how do I get me some of that? How do I find these fantastic, amazing, driven people? I guess I want to ask you two questions because even some entrepreneurs are not as driven as you and I are. Right. Where do we get our drive and where do you coach your clients to get their drive? And then how do we build a team that is as driven as we are? I'll answer first, how do we get our drive? And I know nothing about this, David, about you. So I'll be curious to see if this is true or if you agree. Your parents or some parental figure. I was talking about someone recently who, good, good soul, good person, just very misguided work ethic, and everything's exhausting for them. And I said, like, this is a parenting problem. I can't fix this. This was a parenting problem. And that doesn't mean that there's not people who have no parental role models that don't don't become highly successful or driven, but they caught it from somebody. There was a teacher, there was a grandparent, there was a minister, you know, there was something because, you know, I, kindergarten through 12th grade, I never missed a day of school. I wasn't allowed to miss school. They said, this is your one job. We will feed you. We won't make you work. I wasn't a kid who had to have a job in in high school or in the summers. They said, but you get your ass up and you go to school and you do your schoolwork and you you do it pretty well. You don't have to be an all-A student. And we've got the rest. And if I woke up sick, they said, your job is to go to school. Now, if you can't make it all day, you call us. We'll come get you. You I'm a seventh generation farm family. And so we just have this insane work ethic. And the main piece of it is, is that for me, it's integrity. You know, I believe that, you know, every, all this bullshit you hear people say about like money comes to you. No, you earn money. You work for money. You know, I don't think anything comes easy and I don't think anybody's lucky. I think the organized and the consistent and the hungry are lucky all the time. Are you listening to this? Rewind, rewind this podcast right now. Re-listen to the last 45 seconds about a hundred times because Suzanne, you're a thousand percent right. Holy smokes. Hey, good looking. Are you currently getting paid to speak? Would you like to ramp that up? We can help. Book a confidential speaker strategy call with our team at doitmarketing.com slash call, and let's see what we might do together. The call is free, but the results may be priceless. You know, people say entrepreneurship is hard. Yeah. And it reminds me of the John Wayne quote. He says, you know, life is hard, and life is harder if you're stupid. Mm-hmm. You know, entrepreneurship is hard, but a lot of people, you know, They'll make one sales call. It's like, well, Susanna, I tried this one thing on LinkedIn. And Suzanne, you know, I, I did a kind of a half a challenge once for my people and like no one signed up. And this kind of one trial, one knock on the door, one attempt at something. I know that you, you transform entrepreneurs in this way. How do you get someone that maybe did not have that parental drive yeah. and coach them, coax them, show them the transformation that they could have if they literally went all in and were unstoppable? A couple of things. First of all, most people half-ass their whole life, right? They half-ass their whole life. You know, I just encourage if you're listening to this podcast right now, just close your eyes for a second and ask yourself, what would my life look like if I just chose one thing and fully threw my whole being into that one thing, committed to it. Most people also don't know what commitment means. So to answer your question specifically, the first thing I do is train people on commitment. Commitment has nothing to do with feeling. I have a three and a half year old kid. 
I committed to being a parent. At 1.45 in the morning last night, he starts screaming my name and he says, I need you to come in here. I need you to come in here. I need you to come in here. I did not want to come in there just then. I knew he wasn't sick and he had yelled what he wanted. It was about a light and the wrong light was on. And it, you, you know, he's a toddler. I did not want to go in there and I did not want to be a parent. I wanted to be a sleeping adult with no responsibilities. But how I felt doesn't matter. I committed. And when people run their businesses off of feelings, they're running hobbies, not businesses. I don't feel like calling anybody ever almost. I don't feel like, you know, training and managing 18 people. I don't feel like any of that. But I committed to this and I cannot get a reward without a commitment. So everything for me starts with commitment. The great John Wooden, the very famous UCLA basketball coach, if you've never read the book on leadership, it's a brilliant one. The first week of practice for 37 years was the same thing for 37 years. He brought the greatest basketball legends in the world into a gymnasium and had them practice putting on their socks and tying their shoes. Because everything is about conditioning and consistency, and a blister will bring down a giant. Amen times 10. Now, I want to talk about, you have a fabulous entrepreneurial coaching, training set of programs. And of course, because we're on the speaking show, you also have some fantastic speaker training, and that's a whole separate kettle of fish. How did you transition? I know that you've always done, because you mentioned it a moment ago, you've always done speaking as a lead generator for your business. And you really mastered that. And you have all kinds of cool techniques and strategies that you teach your clients. How did you then switch to, well, let's go big with this whole speaking training program as a separate standalone offer? And what were the steps along the way? Yeah. So speaking is my number one source of revenue. Now I don't mean keynote, like being paid to speak. I do selling from the stage or or either I use it as a lead generation tool to then convert later. So one of the things that probably very early on really was helpful to me was that I didn't know how to build a business, but I understood theater. And so I thought, okay, you know, how do you put butts in seats? Oh, you engage people, you entertain people, you inspire people, you get people to forget their troubles for a little bit. So I said, oh, go out and speak. Even if you don't know what you're doing, go out and speak. And so I went out and, you know, started speaking very early on. And it's still to this day is our number one lead generator and our number one revenue generator. And I think that people confuse speaking with content you know, people don't want to be educated. Stephen King in his book on writing said, you know, I can prove that because if that were the case, textbooks would be bestsellers. So people want to be inspired. They want to be um, engaged. They want to be made to laugh. They want to be made to feel. And I didn't know how to build a business, but I thought I could figure out how to make people feel something. And so I started there and I knew if I could get them to feel something, I could ask something of them and I would get them to feel something. And then I would say, Hey, do you want to have a conversation? And I literally built my business off of speaking, asking them to jump on the phone with me. Let's see if we can solve a problem and converting them into clients. The other thing that you're masterful at and that I'm learning from you is how to have a meaningful, deep, but concise sales conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of these folks say, Oh, I, you know, I had an hour and a half call with this guy and he didn't end up buying. You know, I had a 75 minute call with so-and-so and and it turned out that he was broke or they didn't have the budget to bring me in or do my program. How do you outline a sales conversation that respects your prospect, respects your time, their time, and really gets to the heart of the matter so gosh darn quickly? Uh, three points. Let's, let's really get this concise. Three points. The first point is that story will stop a sale. Story will stop a sale. So I really don't allow people to get into their story. Their story is why they have a problem. So if I spend my time in a conversation in their story, it means I spend my time in their world instead of the new world. 
right? So that's first is like, we don't want a story. I want, what is your problem and what is the solution you would like to see? So that's- So you will, you will literally either interrupt, redirect, yeah. say, hey, you know what? Our time is super limited. That's not necessary information right now. I'm yeah. sure it's important. Let's talk about such and such. So you'll pivot that conversation back to where you want to go. Yep, absolutely. The second is sales is the transference of inspiration. So it is my job to get them to see what could be for them and hold that vision and get them to agree to that vision. Because if they don't agree to that vision, first of all, I don't want to sell them and it's not ethical and it's not in the best interest of both people. So sales is the transference of inspiration. So it's really important to get them to understand their future, their vision, the solution, the painkiller, if you will, that supports them. So that's really a key important part of it. And the third is, is that we don't actually have to talk about that much. If you came to me with a problem, I mean, it's only 10% of the time that you're on the phone with somebody who doesn't realize you may have a solution to their problem. Maybe it, you thought it was a sales call and it's not really, or you know, or they thought you did one thing and you don't do it. 90% of the time, they've agreed to get on the phone with you because they understand you solve a problem. And so I say that. I mean, you can just be really honest. I say, so here's the deal. I can give you a little solution now or I can give you a solution for a lifetime. Which do you prefer? And a solution for a lifetime is this product, this program, this service, this coaching. And so... To sum all of that up, people aren't willing to be honest in sales conversations. They think they have to be a certain person or way or being. And the only way to be is like, this is what you came for. This is what I do. We either cut a deal or we don't. It's that simple. I know that there is a cool virtual event coming up. Yes, I'm so excited. As we're recording this, we're still hot and heavy in the middle of the COVID-19 craziness and tragedy and kind of global crisis. You've always done these amazing, fantastic experiential events, and now it's online. Talk about what driven the event is, and then talk about how you're pivoting to this online format for it. And this is the first time it's ever going to be online only. Yes. Yeah, it is. I mean, we have live streamed portions of our events before, but this is really, we are taking our event that we've done for 11 years now and re-scripting it and reshaping it and retooling it to be a like, you know, experiential, engaged, binge-worthy virtual event. And it's driven the event Home Edition. And part of it is called Home Edition because you're getting a box landing on your doorstep with a with a whole loot of business things that support your business and your education and your experience for the three days. And we are currently building out a studio for this with uh, multiple sets. And, and I don't want to give too much away. We've got some really cool surprises and different things happening. So it is meant to be in the comfort of your home without the gross Marriott Caesar salads, without travel, without a snoring roommate, without your luggage being lost and you can sit in your home or your office and consume three days of content to help you grow a six or seven figure business in a really experiential way. No Zoom Doom. No Zoom Doom. No Zoom Doom. What a great episode. Wowza. Tell you what, if you want to ramp up your revenue as an expert who speaks professionally, you should really check out our free online training at doitmarketing.com slash webinar. At the end, we're going to give all kinds of links and resources, but give us the URL and we're going to have all of this under the show notes when you go under this episode at thespeakingshow.com. But Suzanne, where do we go to find out about this fantastic online event? Really simple, thedrivenevent.com. And you can choose general admission or VIP. Super simple, thedrivenevent.com. Or you can always reach out to my team at help at Driven Inc. I-N-C, help at Driven Inc.com. Okay. And we've got lots more goodies to give away and resources and websites and who knows what, who knows what else is coming up. Yes. Now you have programs where you help entrepreneurs, usually service-based businesses, right? Coaches, consultants, experts, someone that has something to teach or something to sell in that category. And there are small, medium, large, and supersize versions of what you do. And I know that you call this, because again, we're working together, you call this the pyramid. The money mountain. 
the, I'm sorry, the money map. I call it a pyramid because it, it looks like a pyramid, a but pyramid. you call it the money map. Let's talk about that money map and people that are selling one thing one way are really missing the boat on this, correct? Well, the easiest way to think about this is that if you're building a business and you need a new client and you need a new client and you need a new client, and you need a new client because that's how you make more money. You're in essence, that's a very expensive business model because it costs you, you know, whether you're running Facebook ads or you're buying sponsorships or you're traveling somewhere to speak or whatever it is, you are having to spend money to get your next client. If you have an ascension model or what I call a money mountain where someone can come in and they can naturally ascend to the next level, an upsell and a cross sell will cost you about 50% of time and money to acquire that new client, right? Because they're already in your pipeline and they're just choosing to go to the next level or to buy a cross sell. So a lot of people like start a business and they have one thing. And what that means is every day I get up and I fill the bucket and I fill the bucket and I fill the bucket, right? Whereas if you have an ascension model, it's like every day I get up and I make sure that I can sprinkle some sand in the bucket, but the boulders and the rocks and the pebbles are in there and they're just moving around. And that saves time and money. And that truly is a freedom business model. Yeah, for sure. Now, on that same track of freedom, when you were doing the initial version of your marketing and business growth coaching, how long were you alone? Tell us about when you started to partner up with people, hire other coaches, and give us a quick sketch of the org chart of today. I hired a virtual assistant for like five or 10 hours a month, like within three or four months of being in the business with, you know, I probably had got three or four clients, something like that. And but that was obviously very nominal. Over the course of a couple of years, I got kind of some full-time virtual assistants when the business was a few hundred thousand. I had kind of a person and a half. When it got to like 500,000, I had kind of two full-time virtual assistants. And then when the business crossed the million dollar mark, we really moved toward about a million and a half, two million. We really moved towards employees, right? And having employees. So we have about 15 to 18 full-time employees now. And we have five to seven part-time or vendors or different people that aren't necessarily a W-2. So I knew from the beginning, and I had a coach early on who said something very interesting. He said, one of the reasons Suzanne is moving so fast is because she has the day job. She is forced to delegate. And because being forced to delegate, the business can just scale faster because you're not doing all the little piddly things you shouldn't be doing. I also think having that you know, being in that day job, it required me to be very efficient. And I knew I had a limited amount of time. And when I had that limited amount of time, I had to use it for business growth. So I started off fairly early with just a tiny bit of help doing some, you know, tech stuff and doing some billing stuff is where I started. And then I just, every time I got a couple of clients, I'd go, you need to grow support. And I've always thought that way so that your time is freed up in doing the things that you're the best at. I'm hearing the coaches and the consultants in the audience. They're saying, well, you know, but Suzanne, no one can coach my clients like me. No one can go out and do a consulting project as good as me. A, true or false. And then B, is that smart thinking, whether it's true or false? You're absolutely right. No one can coach your clients like you. And that's a real problem because some people don't want you. And so, you know, when people come to me, there's some people that are like, Suzanne scares me a little bit. And they love working with Rob or with Kevin or with James or with Susan or with Amanda. And we all have different styles and personalities. We we all have similar training and acumen. And certainly we all, one person might be a little better at this area than another, but it's a really about style and it's really about connection. So the beautiful thing about my business is almost no one walks away because they don't find a fit. Yeah, that's really, really important. And I think it's not, what you said is so insightful. It's not like they're better coaches than you. No. They're better fits for some clients. That's right. And you're a better fit for some clients. But if you're the only coach, if you're the only consultant, if you're the only trainer in your company and you happen not to gel with a client, you're going to lose that deal. Absolutely. Oh, well, you know what? 
you're going to be great with James and another client comes in, you're going to be great with Barbara. You now have more flexibility and more adaptability to make more good fits with more good clients. Absolutely. And it really also separates the pros from the amateurs, right? Amateurs think this is about me and I have to do it all and everybody wants me and pros go, everybody wants what I do and what I have to offer, but we need to find a really great fit for them to do it with. Yeah, for sure. As we're coming to the close here, let's talk about a couple of online things that you're doing Because one thing that I'm just observing, and this is before we even started working together, is you give massive amounts of value for free. And then what's even worse, you give massive amounts of value to your paying clients. But the free stuff is super impressive. I mean, you're live streaming, you're doing coaching calls, you're doing challenges, you're doing all these things. Talk about the overwhelming amount of value that you're injecting into the marketplace and what the strategy is behind it. Yeah, you know, certainly the baseline strategy is giver's gain. The baseline strategy is give away your best stuff and they'll buy the rest, you know, all of that. But I think the psychological strategy behind it is my goal is always to be so many places and be so good that people can't ignore you. And I've had people say this to me before. They've said, I mean, at some point I just surrendered. It's like, you call me, you text me, you give me this free, you sent me seeds in the mail, you sit, right? And it's, it's really about thinking about touching every sense of someone, of a customer or potential client's life. And people are always going to be attracted to places of generosity, right? And so you may not be ready to hire a coach right now, but if you were in my more than okay club program and you got tons of free stuff there and we had a free session with you and we mailed you something and we invited you to, at some point you're going to go, let me check in with them. I mean, even if you don't buy, you're not going to ignore that which is everywhere. And that's kind of our motto. You cannot ignore that which is everywhere. And of course, if you're everywhere, you better be good, right? And it better be good or then you're just everywhere and you're annoying. Yeah. Right. What a great point. You got to be everywhere and you got to be good. Being yeah. everywhere, being bad will just sink your business faster. That's right. Well, let's talk about how can people get more Suzanne Evans? Where can we send them? Links. Let's talk about the Driven event one more time. But links, resources, websites, what kind of goodies do you want to sprinkle on our audience? Well, they can go to driveninc.com. And I know like we kind of alternate our freebie that is there. I think right now it's like three phases of selling during scary times. So that's probably what's going to be up there now. So go to driveninc.com and grab that and grab a session with one of our amazing coaches, but also join us for the three-day event. If you've gotten a little nugget here, you know, I'll I'll give this away before you go to the site. It's $197 for general admission. So it's like, you know, if you've gotten one or two things out of this, it's probably already worth $197. So spend three days with us on money mountains and sales and team building and niche and messaging and marketing and offline and online strategies and Facebook challenges and Facebook with lives and, you know, and how to project your finances and your money and do all of your uh, money calculations with us, right? So that's what we do for three days. And we have a ton of fun doing it. My background is the Broadway theater industry. My background is theater and education and music. So we usually knock people's socks off. This is going to be the home edition, which is great for you because no travel to get there. But we, uh, in the past, have had everybody from the Broadway cast of Chicago be our opening number to famous uh, circus acts to amazing stuff. So I promise we'll wow you and you'll have a great blueprint for a six or seven figure business. So that's thedrivenevent.com. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. I'm going. I'm in. Suzanne Evans, you are a rock star. I appreciate you. We have to have you back on the show. This was so tremendously valuable. Thanks for being on with us. Thank you so much for having me. Bye, everybody. Well, that wraps up another episode of The Speaking Show. Hey, tell you what, if you like us, rate us and review us on iTunes. Subscribe. Tell a friend. Go grab the notes and downloads and extras at thespeakingshow.com. See you next time. 